Rolex killed the John Mayer Daytona. So first some context. The John Mayer Daytona was released in 2016, but only became super popular towards 2019 after we saw John Mayer wearing it and his infamous appearance on Houdinki, Talking Watches 2 with John Mayer. I think that pretty much cemented this watch as extremely popular and mainstream. Now there are two John Mayer Daytonas, both of them were discontinued. We'll keep calling them John Mayer Daytonas because that's because he's the one who made them popular. And they are the, the yellow gold one with the green dial, that's the point of this video. And also the blue one with the white gold case, white gold Daytona, blue dial. Although it did not catch on the same way the solid yellow gold green dial version did. Now the reference of this watch is the 116508 for the yellow gold green dial. The 08 at the end uh, defines that it's solid yellow gold. And the 116509 is the blue variant with the white gold case, so 09 is white gold. If it weren't for John Mayer owning them and making a big statement about them, I do not think they would be as popular as they are now, but that's the nature of all luxury items that are hyped. So why did Rolex discontinue them? Rolex discontinuations pretty much need to be analyzed as a business study major. I believe they are to some extent, Harvard Business Studies or many other schools, but you can argue that it wouldn't make sense in order to run an older watch design with the same model simultaneously. So talking about why they discontinued it, they launched a new range of Daytonas. Well, it's not vastly different, but it, it's an updated case design. Well, it's an updated watch with an updated reference. And with this new lineup, they discontinued the entire old reference lineup. So that kind of makes sense. That's the easy explanation, at least. Every time Rolex comes out with a model refresh, they discontinue models with the older case design and movements. Tudor tends to do a gradual phase out. They don't discontinue the, the entire lineup at once, as we saw that with the Black Bay, the larger one, the 41 watches. But Rolex uh, seems to be very definite in what they do. They're not experimenting. Tudor is the experimental brand. Rolex does it this way because that's one of the major benefits of having way more demand than supply. You don't really have the issue of needing to get rid of a bunch of old stock. There is no old stock, so they can Anytime, mid-year, they can literally just decide to discontinue something. Watch brands will claim that having one model or one design that is put on a pedestal and the entire brand being popular as a result of that one piece, they like to argue that it's not good for the brand and they want to limit this. Because the brighter something burns, essentially, the, the easier it dies out. The John Mayer Daytona in yellow gold usurped all Rolex precious metal models. This has done waves unlike any other solid gold or precious metal watch from Rolex and I'd argue any other brand. I'm not that old, but I still cannot come up with some precious metal watch that is more popular than this. If you can, put it in the comments below. I know you're going to go for the day dates, but seriously, they, they have not caught on the same way this Daytona did. The day dates have just been ever popular, not burning too bright, but just very successful over a long period of time and understood in, in that manner. But the hype behind this yellow gold Daytona, I haven't seen it. I think this indicates that potential buyers wanting a solid gold watch decided that the Daytona, not the day dates, was the one to get. So this solid gold Daytona brought more people into precious metals than the day dates ever did. If you take a look at Rolex's ever-extending precious metal watch catalog, most of their new models are moving towards precious metals because the profits are higher and it's naturally much better for them to push onto customers. And typically customers are more resistant to precious metals because you know it's expensive for a reason and that, that is absolutely not functional. And most people don't want to wear something that expensive on their wrists and do not consider, they, they essentially consider it jewelry and that is a little bit far from the tool aspect that watches are sold on. So it's a, it's a harder sell for a watch brand to sell precious metal jewelry watches. There's an argument for the fact that watches are not tools at all anyway. It's just something fascinating. It, it's art and that is basically jewelry. But still, the vast majority of the public doesn't quite see it that way. Okay, so now we're going to get on to the speculative part where I come up with theories behind why I think they killed this watch. This is... Not backed by facts because 
they haven't released a statement saying why they killed his watch. So this is what you get. It's my speculation that Rolex witnessed a lack of expected increase in demand across the entire precious metal range in comparison to the increase in demand for the John Mayer Daytona. So essentially, the John Mayer Daytona is a precious metal watch, and it's become so popular and so much more in demand than any other of their solid gold or precious metal watches that it actually has not raised the demand for all precious metal watches across the board, which is what would actually benefit the bottom line of a company like Rolex if they could just simply sell precious metal watches. Uh, even if they didn't have an, uh, an extremely hype model, but if all their watches or the majority of the watches sold could be precious metal, that would be so much more beneficial than having one or two meteorically popular models. I'm not saying Rolex has trouble selling anything. They, they don't. I'm just stating that it's easier to sell a solid yellow gold watch in the form of a Daytona than it is for any other model in their range. If we are to believe that the excessive popularity of a standalone model is detrimental to a brand, then it makes sense why they discontinue the watch. Now I want to go into even further extrapolation of my opinions and thoughts, not facts. This may be far-fetched, but I think Rolex noticed the reduction in secondary market values for the Daytona. Now I said this is the most hyped watch, then what do I mean by reduction in values? Well, it has been speculated that this watch would be discontinued almost every year since 2019. And when the market correction happened last year, it was around April, right after the new Rolex releases and the Daytona wasn't discontinued, the values did plummet significantly on this model. There were too many people betting on it discontinuing, so just before Rolex releases their watches, that's the period of March, that's when it really, really ramped up under the guise of it potentially being discontinued. So the values went really high, then it wasn't discontinued, then they dropped again. And then the entire market correction happened throughout the year. So the values never really picked up. And I think Rolex noticed this. And this is not good because declining hype for this model is not a good sign overall for all precious metal watches. So maybe they discontinue this watch to cement the values. Once again, just like what they did with the Tiffany OP, the 41 at least. When you discontinue a watch, you do not make it less popular. You just cement the values the speculative values, all of it. You cement the market because it's not being produced anymore. The values are set. And whatever is being asked on average, the values are set at a baseline of that. And it typically goes up a little bit more. Occasionally over time, if interests change, it can drop. But in most cases, at least with recent Rolex, that hasn't been the case. Values have generally gone up. So essentially, the whole game is being played under the guise of artificial scarcity. All watch companies that are successful, all luxury brands that are successful at the moment, they use artificial scarcity to prop up their products. And when you discontinue something, you make the artificial scarcity less artificial and more realistic. Because over history, the highest value products are those that were made a long time ago and cannot be made anymore or are not made anymore. Essentially, production has to have been stopped for something to become extremely valuable. Just examples are everywhere, even in art. I don't think you really care about da Vinci's paintings if, if he was still alive. Well, you would if he was like 600 years old, but now a counterpoint to all of this, you can argue that Rolex does not really care because uh, anything higher than retail will always sell. But when it comes to Rolex, it's, it's not necessarily the values of this watch on the gray market that matter. It's the, it's the fact that the higher values indicate higher demand higher popularity of the product. And that is extremely desirable to every brand. It does not directly influence their bottom line, but desirability is the only factor putting Rolex at the top of all watch brands. It's not the designs, history, the watchmaking, the complications. These are not things that Rolex is known for. It's just pure desirability. They've made products that everyone wants. There's a plethora of other brands that can match all of the other criteria or surpass Rolex. Just not desirability. So bottom line is not as important as desirability and plummeting values of a watch indicate a loss in desirability and that is something Rolex doesn't want. So those are my speculative thoughts. Put yours in the comments below. I'll see you there.